welcome back. This is Mrs. Rewrite with Advanced Geometry. Today we are learning notes on 8.5, Use Properties of Trapezoids and Kites. We've already copied the notes into our notebook from pages 537, 538, and 539 in the textbook. All right, so example one, show that O-R-S-T is a trapezoid. Okay, so what do we know about a trapezoid? A trapezoid has what? Exactly one pair of parallel sides. We need to prove that this segment, RS, is parallel to segment OT. So let's see what their slopes are. We are rising one, running two. This is a slope of one half. Over here, up one, over two, up one, over two. Yes, it also has a slope of one half. Therefore, these are both parallel. We have exactly one set of parallel sides because these are clearly not parallel. Vertical has a zero slope, right? Vertical is zero. Wait, no. Vertical is undefined. Sorry. Vertical is an undefined slope. Horizontal is a zero slope. Vertical is undefined. So over here, it's definitely not vertical, so it's also not undefined. This one is down one over one. This is a slope of negative one versus an undefined slope. These are not parallel, clearly. So we have exactly one set of parallel sides. Therefore, it is a trapezoid. All right, so moving on to our next example. What if in example one, suppose the coordinates of point S are four, five? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So it was over here. Suppose S was moved to over here. What type of quadrilateral would this be now? It is not a rhombus. Why is it not a rhombus? This side length is three and three. Is this side length three? No. It's, if I did a quick little Pythagorean theorem, I'd have 2 by 1, 2, 3, 4. So if it was a 2 and a 4, 2 squared is 4, 4 squared is 16, 16 plus 4 is 20. This is the square root of 20, which would reduce to 2 rad 5 and 2 rad 5. This is clearly not a rhombus because a rhombus has all equal sides. Any other guesses? It has a parallelogram. It has two sets of parallel sides. We have an undefined slope here, undefined slope here. This slope right here is rise 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. We have the same slope here. This thing is called a parallelogram. Opposite pairs of sides are parallel. Which of the interior angles of quadrilateral O, R, S, T are supplementary angles? Explain your reasoning. Okay, so which of the interior angles of quadrilateral O, R, S, T are supplementary angles? So supplementary angles do what? They add to 180, right? Complementary adds to 90, supplementary adds to 180. So which of these angles would add to 180? So if we remember back to when we learned about um, parallel lines, which we have, it's a parallel theorem, we have parallel lines, and they're cut by a transversal, right? If parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then your consecutive interior angles, your same side insides, are supplementary. So angle R is supplementary to angle O. Angle O is supplementary to angle T, same side inside. Angle S is supplementary to angle T. And R and S are also supplementary. Same side, inside. So they said O and R and T and F. Oh, because they're doing it off of the original, not once they made it a parallelogram. So if you're doing it off of the trapezoid, just the trapezoid, we would do, here's our transversal, here's our parallel lines. So S and T are um, same side, inside, and so are... R and O. Those are also consecutive interior angles, same side and sides. So R and O, S and T. If we moved our S over here, like we after we altered our example, then we would have had those other two sets of pairs. Because with a parallelogram, there's going to be four sets um, of angles that are going to be supplementary versus just the two on the trapezoid. The stone above the arch in the diagram is an isosceles trapezoid. Find the measure of angle K 
the measure of angle M and the measure of angle J. All right, so this is an isosceles trapezoid. So what's kind of cool about an isosceles trapezoid is look what happens if I extended this out. What does it become if I extended it all the way out? Oh, I can't even do it. Okay, it'll become an isosceles triangle. And in an isosceles triangle, my base two angles are congruent. So if L is 85, then K is 85. What do we know about the fact that these two are parallel lines? We know same side insides are supplementary, consecutive interior angles. So this is going to be 95, and then this one is also 95. So angle M and J are 95, and angle K and L are 85. In the diagram, MN is the mid-segment of trapezoid PQRS. Find MN. So what do we know about mid-segments? We already learned about mid-segments, right? Didn't we? Like last chapter? Or was it the chapter before? So a mid-segment is made up of midpoints, right? And what's cool about them is, so it cuts this into two equal parts, cuts this side into two equal parts, and the mid-segment is simply the average of these two. So if you take this and this, add them, and divide by 2, you get the length of MN. So 28 plus 12, 40. Divide by 2, 20. They average to 20. Your mid-segment is 20. And our units was inches, so 20 inches. This is theorem 8.17. In exercises 3 and 4, use the diagram of a trapezoid, EFGH. If EG equals FH, EG equals FH. So they're saying the diagonals are congruent. Is the trapezoid isosceles? Explain. What do you guys think? You copied a bunch of notes today. Yes. So let's think. Alternate interior angles are congruent. <laughs> Alternate interior angles are congruent. Third angles theorem. These two triangles are congruent by angle, and wait now, does angle, angle, angle prove congruence? No, it does not. So what do we know? Hmm. Don't we just have a rule that we copied down today about the diagonals being equal? You copy it down? What's it called? Right, theorem 8.16 just simply says if the diagonals are congruent, then it's an isosceles trapezoid, and you just memorize it. If angle HEF is 70 degrees, HEF, right here, 70 degrees, and FGH, F, G, H is 110. Is it isosceles? Explain. All right, well, these are, um, these are parallel. So same side insides are supplementary. So this is 110. This has to be 70 to add up to 180. Base two angles are congruent. Therefore, it's an isosceles trapezoid. Angle EFG is 70 degrees by consecutive interior angles theorem. And then now that the base two angles are equal, it is definitely an isosceles trapezoid by theorem 8.15. In trapezoid JKLM, angle J and angle M are right angles.
right angles. Okay. And JK is 9 centimeters. The length of the mid-segment NP of trapezoid JKLM is 12. Sketch the trapezoid JKLM and its mid-segment. Find ML. Okay, so my drawing's just totally wrong. <laughs> because if I have two of them that are right angles and it's a trapezoid, it's probably looking like this, right? So which were the two right angles, J and M? J, K, L, M, both right angles, right? Then it says that J, K is 9. The mid-segment N, P is 12. Find M, L. So we're looking for this. Do you guys see how I was able to figure out how to redraw my triangle or my trapezoid correctly? You just have to think, what is the rule of trapezoid? You can only have one set of parallel sides. So this is my new picture. What? Obviously, it's not drawn to scale because this number has to be greater than 9. 9 is the smaller side, so it's definitely not drawn appropriately, but it doesn't matter. 9 plus what divided by 2 is 12? Well, 12 times 2 is 24. 9 plus what is 24? 15. But you're going to do 9 plus what divided by 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 9 plus what is 24? Subtract 9 from both sides. X is 15. 15 plus 9 divided by 2 is 12. So now in reality, we technically should have drawn it more like that, where it was longer on the top than the bottom. But it's okay. It doesn't have to be drawn to scale. See, they drew, it, they drew it with the shorter leg being the JK, which is fine. Find the measure of angle D in the kite shown at the right. <clears throat> so on this guy, we're going to go like this. This is an isosceles triangle. The base two angles are equal, 180 minus 124. 56? 56 divided by 2. 28 and 28, right? Another isosceles triangle. The base two angles are equal. 180 minus 80 is 100. Divide by 2 is 50 each. So 78. Another way you could have done this is it's a quadrilateral. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 times 180 is 360. 360 minus this and this, divide by 2. 360 minus 80 minus 124, divide by 2, and you would get 78 each. So there's a couple different ways to do this. In a kite, the measures of the angles are blah, blah, blah. Find the value of x. What are the measures of the angles that are congruent? All right, so we know that if it's a kite, it's a quadrilateral, it all adds up to 360. So 360 and minus 2 times 180, where n is the number of sides. So 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 times 180 is 360. So 360 equals 3x plus 75 plus 90 plus 120. So 120, 210, 285. What is 360 minus 285? 75, right? 15 to get to 300 and 60 more. 75 equals 3 times what? So x equals 25. So when I plug back in, 25 times 3 is 75. So the angles that are the same are 75 degrees. x is 25. The angles that are, the, that are congruent, the two congruent angles, are 75 degrees.